Hello everyone, we are the amazing power armadillos. Armadillos? How do you say anyway? Armadillos, exactly. And uh, uh, we're building an, an epic app uh, in order to deal with the points. When, so when a teacher needs to uh, award some points in, in school uh, to the houses. So, uh, Scott, can you tell us what technology we're using? Uh, yeah, so we're, we're using the Cognitive Services Vision API and we're trying to use um, yeah, recognition of the faces of the kids so that we can automatically assign points to the correct houses. Um, what, what I like about this kind of environment is, is that there's an opportunity for everyone to kind of work together, different, like, different types of people. So I'm kind of trying to do the pro dev thing. We've got the functional dev going and kind of more of the citizen dev side of things as well. So it, I love the fact that we can all kind of work together in this environment. It's a bit more relaxed where there's less stuff going on with, you know, pressures of day to day business. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and we have beer and, you yeah. know, yeah. pizza. Yeah, pizza, beer. Yeah. Yeah. And we're Refined doing some, sugar, yeah, we're doing we some videos as well. So uh, we're just having a lot of fun. This yeah. is really, really cool. It's awesome. Thanks for inviting us. <laughs>
for those, of you, for those of you that come to the Bespoke Badger on the Thursday night, this is not the Bespoke Badger. Behave your best. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, welcome to now the fifth Hack for Good that we've done. Uh, this is awesome. Thank you guys all very much for joining us. We have a large amount of people on this call, and I think it's probably going to grow um, based on the fact that... Uh, <laughs> In the Amir region, I think uh, our, our friends, uh, our, our Tanzo elite, had their job cut out for them. But if I switch to a more serious note, right, we, the way we want to kick off is we're going to treat this like a bit like a fizzy cool drink, right? You know when you shake up a fizzy juice and you open it really slowly? You've only got to release like a small amount of awesome at a time, right? So we're going to start off with Will, because Will's probably, you know, Will's the bubbles, right? You've got to release that little piece really, really slowly. So real quick, um, my name is Chris Hunting Ford. Uh, I'm part of Power Community. I work for Microsoft, and um, we we run Hack for Good, which is pretty awesome. So some of you have been part of this before, some of you haven't. Uh, Will, do you want to intro yourself? Hey, yeah, sure. I'm uh, William Dorrington. I'm part of Power Community. I'm just uh, just a, a follower of Chris mainly, but uh, I also work for Hitachi Solutions as well. Cool. All right, so folks, if you wouldn't mind, please go on mute, uh, purely because of the fact that if we hear like strange noises like uh, battling sea turtles or walrus, uh, we will point you out and uh, yeah. Anyway, so on to the more serious notes, we decided when we, when we were originally going to run this at MBAS that uh, we were going to do Hack for the Planet and it was going to be very environmental focused. And um, obviously due to the current circumstances that we're facing now with this crisis on the go, it really sucks. Um, some really sad stuff that's been going on in the world. And unfortunately, you know, we're in a position where, number one, we're kind of isolated from one another. It's very different to collaborate and communicate. Um, also, guys, please go on mute. Sorry. Um, very diff difficult for us to collaborate and communicate. Luckily, we've got these amazing tools to help us do this. But also, we decided we were just going to keep it as hack for the planet. Also, it, helped, it, it saved me rebuilding a lot of slides. So uh, <laughs> there we go. But anyway... Uh, Hack for the Planet is very important for us because we know we are in a position to help, okay? So if I kick this off by saying we are in a, in a position to help because this affects all of us. So, hello. Uh, we are in a situation that is unfamiliar to most of us, if not all, and we haven't been affected on mass and scale like this from a pandemic perspective since the Spanish flu back in 1918. That's a long time ago. The effect this has had ranges from the most awful, where loved and cherished family members and friends have sadly passed away, all the way through to those that run small businesses and operations to support their family and wider community, having to rethink their approach with a new government mandated restrictions in place to help suppress and repress this awful and hideous virus. Or sadly, in some cases, they have to down tools altogether and stop operations. But due to this, a new world is emerging, a new way of working where socializing with family and friends now means actually looking for a camera and a screen like we're doing right now. Shopping for food means obeying a certain limit on customers in a store at a time, uh, at a time so only a few can go in, with distances between fellow shoppers and caps on certain goods. I mean, the UK went absolutely crazy for toilet roll. That became money for a while. I brought stuff with toilet roll. It was mad. And actually, where interaction is low to help preserve what all of us hold so closely and delicately, and I'm, of course, referring to life in this case. Now, we can help. Us sitting in front of our screens right now on a Saturday can assist in great ways. I'm talking directly to you right now. We all have two things in common. One, a passion for helping others, which is, of course, why we are giving up our Saturday and about to commit long, epic and awesome hours of work to build fantastic solutions. And number two, point two, we have a passion and a skill set for leveraging superior technology to enable and assist society. Now we can build solutions to enable a local grocery store, the off license, the butcher to continue providing services to their community during and post COVID-19. So from things such as managing customer flow within shops, stock control, PPE all the way through to full blown point of sale systems. I've seen this personally where power platform solutions have been built that have directly assisted with the global COVID-19 efforts. Solutions to manage the vulnerability list for the UK National Health Service, ensuring they have food, medicine and much more. Solutions that keep track of those that may be feeling suicidal and need support services to let them know there are people there for them and even solutions that sadly manage the mortuary logistics for the fallout of COVID-19. So we really do have these tools to us right now that's going to make that huge impact. 
So together with the collective genius around the world that's connected through this network we're experiencing right now, over a hundred of us, we can be part of the solution. Now I'm gonna hand you back over to my buddy, Chris, who's got some really epic stats to share with you. Chris, I think you're on mute. Ah, uh, elementary error, my good friend. <laughs> <laughs> As I say, we can't hear you, something is bad. It's weird, it's okay. I kind of just feel like don't need the mute button, don't need even a microphone. Um, so yeah, thanks for that, buddy. Listen, th there's one thing that's really key here, and I, I want to show you two slides around the stats for this, and I want to show you something that's going to blow your minds because we're actually in a very fortunate position to be here right now. So this is the slide deck from um, the, the previous Hack for Good that we ran at Embass in um, Atlanta. So we had 50 attendees. It was awesome. We had loads of participants from lots of different countries. We had a blue weirdo running around in a web with <laughs> names. Um, it was really brilliant, right? You know, lots of different teams, very collaborative, very on-prem, okay? We got some really great solutions out of that. So actually a couple of the solutions that were generated out of that Hack for Good are being used live right now within various organizations. So it's a huge win from a value perspective. Let me show you the next slide, and this is gonna, this is gonna blow your minds. Look at this. This is what the virtual world has given us. This is a gift. We have had over 390 registrations for this hackathon. Guys, we put this live in two weeks. This hackathon was live not even for, it was live exactly 11 days, okay? 390 people registered for this. So first of all, a huge thank you to every single one of you. You are the people that make this work, okay? You are the people that help provide the value to the organizations that need your help. The second thing that I think is absolutely bonkers is look at the opportunity from the number of countries we're working with. I mean, there are people on this call from South Africa, Kenya, Nigeria, Netherlands, Germany. Where in the world do you get this? Where in the world do you get the opportunity to have this? You don't. We are so, so fortunate. And what's brought us together is the technology. Over 55 teams, 55 teams over a virtual hackathon. This is all you guys. You've done this. So if you compare the stats from last year at Embass Hack for Good to the opportunity you have in a virtual world right now, it's awesome to have this. It is awesome to have the group collaboration. Yes, we would love to be together and um, you know high-fiving and hugging and uh, Will doing other weird things to people. But what's epic now is that we can still be together, we can still spend time with one another. And yes, we're not in the, all in the same room, but we all have the same mindset. And that's really awesome. It's a collective neural network of people on the same level, building awesome stuff to help other organizations. So let me talk a little bit about more of the, some of the people that matter in this, right? Oops, Will, I've replaced your slide with someone else, buddy, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a better person, I don't mind. <laughs> so we are very, very lucky to have Donna with us. Uh, I'll let Donna intro herself a little later, but Donna has given up a lot of time to do this. In fact, Donna is one of the people that's not sleeping uh, because of this hackathon. So uh, what a rock star. She is an absolute evangelist, been brilliant with this. And I really think that, you know, having a superstar like Donna helping us with this from, you know, our side of things and also promoting this hackathon within the corp team at Microsoft is really special. We've got Keith Watling. Now, if any of you have ever heard Keith speak, you know exactly what you're getting yourself in for. The only way I can explain it is blah, because there are no actual adjectives to talk about the way Keith does things. The session that you're going to hear from him today is unbelievable. I've, I know you've heard the digital inclusion talk before, but I promise you every single time we have heard it, it blows our minds. A couple of other people that are very, very important, and this hackathon does not work without these people, folks. Okay, We've got time zone leads that they've given up days and days and days, and obviously with two weeks at hand when they were notified, you know, drop these people a mail and they were on board ready to do stuff there and then. It's, it's physically impossible for me to do everything. And, um, you know, Lucy, Mike, Alison, and Lee have given up a lot of their time to help us get this hackathon ready. I know that there have been a lot of shuffles and moving around. So I really just want to say thank you guys very, very, very much for your hard work. I don't think you know how much this means to myself and the community and everyone else involved. So massive thank you. We've also got some very special people that have decided to help us judge. Now, a lot of people think judges just watch videos and make a decision off the back of a video. That's not correct. If you guys know Scott, Duro, Ben, and Anna, you're in for it, folks. 
what the judges have asked to do here, what we've asked the judges to do here is review the solutions. What we'd assumed was that they would just take a look at a video and make a decision. That's not what's going to happen. Okay. They will describe, Lucy and um, Lee will describe a little later, and as well as the judges will describe a little about what they're going to do in this scenario. But I can promise you now, they have got their work cut out for them. If you look at the number of people on this call, there are 117 of us. If you divide that by five, you've got a lot of people. I mean, and that's actually excluding the the, the people that will come along later. I think, um, Lucy Lee, how many teams are there in EMEA? You guys are still on mute. Sorry, yeah, that's all right. 30 teams we've got. Well, 31 now, actually, because one of them came from another region. 31 yeah. teams hacking today. Over 190 people. I'm yeah. proud to be the biggest region. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's bonkers, right? So very well done, everyone. But um, unfortunately, three judges judging that many teams, they've got their work cut out for them. And I know they're taking it very seriously. So, yeah, you're in for it. There's another special shout out that I'd like to give and you guys probably don't actually know this is happening. But this man, Narian over here is actually streaming this live across the web. He's been up with Donna and I the whole time, right? Doing this in the background, managing all the technology, making sure people are connected, telling us off when we say naughty words. He is absolutely fantastic. So I really wanted to just bring him to the forefront of this hackathon and let you guys know that whatever's going on in the background, Narian has got a massive hand to play in it. So thank you, dude. You are an absolute superstar. Thank you so much. Yay. We are going to try and experiment very shortly with this, by the way. So the agenda looks a little like this. Uh, Will and I have had our waffle. That's cool. We're going to move. Uh, we're going to move on from here to talk to Donna about where sort of we see Microsoft working within the crisis scenario that we're in now. It is very important you listen because the we decided in this hackathon not to give you use cases. The reason we decided that was because we think if we had given you use cases, everyone would have built the same thing. So if I use my terrible Lego analogies, we want you guys to flip the box of Lego on its back, dig around and use your imagination, build the fairy princess castle, build the pirate ship, weld them together to make a fairy princess pirate ship. I don't care. Build something awesome, right? Use your imaginations. You're only limited by your imagination. We're going to move on to the rules of engagement. So the, 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 the time zone bosses, as I call them now, are going to come in and tell you guys what's what. There'll also be some introductions from the judges. Um, one or two things that we're going to focus on is around the first thing around the flexible hours for this hackathon. We decided to make this a 24-hour hackathon. The reason is because we know you have other commitments outside of this. We know you have kids. We know you have pet badges. We know you are, need to wash the dishes. That's cool. You can work out when you guys hack with your teams. We are not precious about it. All we're wanting is for you guys to build something cool, work together, and make sure that lands up in um in one in the solution uh, uh, the solution repository. So that's really really important. And I just think that one of the key messages here is just get involved. And I'm going to hand over to Will to finalize and wrap this up. Absolutely. Cheers, Chris. So I think from what we've just heard from Chris, you can really see how special and phenomenal our community is. And I think that's something we must keep at the forefront of us. Uh, even though we are apart, we are still very much together and connected, as Chris said, this neural network of awesomeness. So I'm going to keep this part incredibly short as the speakers we've got coming up next are absolutely going to wow you. Like uh, just to repeat what Chris said, every time I hear Keith's speech, it absolutely blows my mind. So I always stick around for it. So let's complete this segment with we all now have the opportunity, the power and the ability in our hands uh, to move forward and be part of the solution for this rather heinous problem together. So please keep remembering it as you move through the day, as you're absorbing all that coffee, caffeine and hacking away. Just remember you are contributing to the solution for this overall pandemic. So thank you so much. Damn right. All right, so we're going to pass over to Donna. While Donna sets up, um, I'm going to let her introduce herself, but I'm going to tell you that Donna is an absolute powerhouse of awesome. And um, she's been very instrumental in the way that the Power Platform is being viewed by the community. And my opinion has breathed a massive breath of fresh air from um, the Microsoft Corp team into the Power Platform. And um, I think sort of revived it quite a little, well, not revived it, but given it a new energy. So Donna, over to you. And you're on mute. <laughs> oh, I was so good about being on mute. Now I want to stay on mute forever. There, can you see my screen? Yeah, we got you, absolutely. Perfect. Okay, first of all, thank you all so much for being here. I know 9 a.m. on a Saturday for uh, our EMEA friends is quite early. 
but you are all here for a very specific reason. So for the next 20, 30 minutes, I ask you to put aside all expectations and preconceived notions you have about hackathons, yourself, what you are going to do for the next 24 hours and just keep an open mind. Okay. So in the chat, I would like for everyone to say yes or no. How many of you would like to make the world a better place? So take a second and chime into the chat. Now I can't even see the chat because I can just see my screen, but I have a feeling many of you are saying yes, because otherwise, why the heck would you wake up at nine o'clock on a Saturday and be participating in a hack for good? You'd be sleeping, you'd be watching Netflix, you'd still be awake from last night, but you wouldn't be participating in a hack for good. So a better question might be, how many of you want to make the world a better place, but have no clue where to start? This is a real life screenshot of my team, former team, trying to make the world a better place. As you can see, we're wearing togas and have lightsabers and have absolutely no idea what to do next. And the reason for that is because we are not actually in the superhero business. People who generally make the world a better place, superheroes. We are busy running our day-to-day -day business. We're busy being software engineers and authors and speakers and teachers, or we're going to school. But we're definitely not flying around with capes, saving humanity from evil. It's just not what we do. So what is a fledgling superhero who's just gotten our cape, who's just learned to fly, who's just gotten our wings, what are we to do now? Now that we have this desire, we think we have some skills, how do we even start? So there's option one, which is set a humongous, ridiculously big goal for ourselves for the weekend. And say in the next 24 hours, we're gonna build a solution that's gonna help every COVID patient in the world find an available hospital bed in the world. It's gonna happen, that's what we're gonna do. And I can pretty much tell you that that is probably not going to work out because you're attempting to do something that we fondly call boiling the ocean. Instead of boiling a cup of water, you're trying to boil the ocean. If I ask any of you to boil a cup of water, any of you can do that right now. If I ask you to boil the ocean, you won't be able to do that right now. Now, this is where most hackathoners go wrong. They set out with some humongous expectation, then they immediately get frustrated and then they give up putting together some hack together solution with a little bit of this, some mixed reality and some power automate, and then they call it a solution to some imaginary problem. It escalates quickly and it doesn't lead anywhere good because you walk away feeling like you wasted time, your solution is not used, and you don't feel like you've done something worthwhile. So instead of this, I would love for you to hear what successful hack teams do. I've been in maybe over 100 hackathons. I've been in tech for 18 years. My first hackathon was when I was in college. So I've been doing hackathons for a long time. In-person hackathons, online hackathons, virtual reality hackathons, Xbox hackathons, all, you name the hack, I've been to the hack. But it's always the one thing these teams have in common. The winning team always has one thing in common. And that is this. They chose one person to help with one problem, with one solution. So one person, one problem, one solution. That's it. They did not decide to go help a thousand people with one problem. And they didn't decide to go help one person with six problems. One, one, one. Very simple rule. Now, you, of course, don't believe me and think that's stupid. So let's talk about a real life case study, okay? Let's contemplate a very important hero in everyone's lives that everyone knows. Superman, okay? Now, on the first day that Superman realized he could fly, and he can shoot lasers and is super strong. Did he swoop into Metropolis and rescue everyone in the entire city of Metropolis, all 20 million from Lex Luthor's evil plane thing? Did he, yes or no? No, he did not. Mainly because he didn't know where Metropolis was. He didn't know who Lex Luthor was. He didn't know how high he could fly. He didn't know about kryptonite. He didn't know any of the information. On the first day that Superman realized he had powers, he saved a kid from a cow. Now, I don't actually know if this is true, but it looks like he's saving this kid from a cow because that looks like a farm and this is some kid. Now, the point is, he achieved a small feat of heroism. 
he achieved a small success before he decided that I'm going to now scale my powers to helping everyone in the world. He did a common software engineering thing called build for one and scale to many. This is actually a design principle at Microsoft where we say whenever we're building something, we want to design for one and scale to many. And the reason we say that is because it's very, very easy to test with one. And once you succeed at testing with one, you can test with another one and you can test with another one. And you're proving these things to be true rather than assuming that this is going to work for some mysterious segment of people. So what is a real example of where this took place? I'd like to introduce you to my four young friends from Sydney, Australia. These four are Microsoft trainees. So Australia has a training program where people without a tech background can come work at Microsoft and be part of this training program where they learn everything on the job. Imagine modern day apprenticeship for tech. So these four young people come from completely non-traditional backgrounds. One person used to be in media entertainment, one used to be a chef, one just graduated high school. So these people are not computer scientists, they're not coders, they're not even low code developers, they're not developers at all. So they join Microsoft, they learn a little bit about the company, they start learning tools. One day, the government of New South Wales, where Sydney's located, the state where Sydney's located, calls Microsoft Australia and says, yo, Microsoft Australia, you know things. We have a problem and we need your help. Microsoft Australia says, tell us, New South Wales government person, what can we do for you? Government guy says, we have a street sleeping problem where there are vulnerable people who are sleeping on the streets of New South Wales and we want to figure out a way that they can stay in your homeless shelter but in a way where you can actually support them, wh where they can stay in the homeless shelters we've got, uh, but we want to figure out how to support them. And the project manager at Microsoft Australia says, that's interesting. I think this is an interesting problem for our trainees to work on. So our trainees receive this problem. So they do exactly what they're supposed to. They go have a chat with the person who runs the homeless shelter. They don't decide to come up with a solution by themselves. They don't act like they know the problem. They go and have a chat with the person who runs the shelter and they find out some very interesting information. Right now, the process works like this. People who volunteer at the homeless shelter will go out with a clipboard and a questionnaire. They will go find people sleeping on the streets and they will say, hey, I've got a question for you. And then they will go through a list of 20 questions. How long have you been sleeping on the street? Do you have any physical ailments? Do you have any mental ailments? Or do you have any family? A, you know, list of questions. Then they'll go to the next person, next person, gather up uh, interviews from all of these people, take them back to the homeless shelter, input them into guess what? An Excel spreadsheet. We love to track things in Excel for some reason, Excel spreadsheet. And once they put everything into an Excel, there's some human who works at the shelter who looks and says and assigns a vulnerability score to each entry. So people's vulnerability scores are higher if they're older, if they're sick, if they've been on the street for a long time, lower if they're not. So once they manually assign vulnerability scores, they do a sort by on the column and decide whose vulnerability score is highest. And then they go back out to where that person was and bring them. Now you can see lots of errors in this. One data may get lost. Some people lost the sheets of paper, the vulnerability score. By the time it's generated, we, they don't know where that person has gone. It's just a complex situation. Overall, it was taking 20 hours a week to just do the interviews and bring them back and get a score. That's a long time people aren't actually helping homeless people. So these four trainees decided, okay, cool, let's build a solution. So as you can see, they've sketched out the solution. What they built was a power app that runs on phones, iOS and Android phones, and there's just a simple form and they fill out the form. They say, where am I located right now on the corner of what and what? What is this? What is the vulnerable person's name? Health conditions, etc. <clears throat> they fill this all out and automatically a vulnerability score is generated just based on this data because they used exactly the same logic as the human used. All of the data is stored in CDS. And once the vulnerability score is decided, if that person is high on the vulnerability list, they can take them back to the shelter right away. You can imagine how many hours this saved. So they went, presented an early prototype to the shelter. The shelter said, this is amazing. Can we use this tomorrow? They're like, we have to imply, you know, get security and compliance and all that, but close. <laughs> so 
then they were able to generate charts and look at stats and they were able to see that they're suddenly saving hundreds of hours a month. Suddenly, as it always happens with government agencies, all the other government agencies in Australia find out about this and they say, hey, 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 we want in on this app thing. Give us the app. And then, of course, the U.S. has FOMO. So Los Angeles government people ping Australia and says, we've heard about this app thing. Can we get your app? So these four trainees, by working with one person, they're in fact scaling to many. They built for one, scale to many. So today you and your team are going to do something very similar. You're going to get together and follow a five-step process. And once you do the five-step process, there's homework. Because it's me, there's always homework. So what is the five-step process? So glad you did not ask. You're going to hear it anyway. One, you're going to brainstorm. Okay. This is where all the free thinking, crazy ideas happen. List five local problems that real people you know are struggling with. Do not make up problems. Mm -hmm. Don't say, I'm sure hospitals are blah, or I'm sure cab drivers are, I do not care. You know this for a fact because you know the human having the problem. This is an example of something Foyan Olajide Bello, a good friend of ours, did at Sterling Bank in Lagos, Nigeria. This is before pandemic, but the same rule applies. She listed 10 problems that her bank was having. She works in the O365 division. She realized there's so many weird issues that go on, like how people fill out timesheets, how people fill out this, how people fill out that. But once she listed 10 local problems, she was able to narrow down to one very specific problem, namely how people move money at bank branches. They have 176 bank branches. How people move money from vaults to ATMs. Right now, before the Power App showed up, they did exactly what you expect. They would move money, vault to ATM, and guess where they would write it down? An Excel spreadsheet. And at the end of the week, they would take the Excel spreadsheet of all of the transactions and mail it to some guy in the central bank. That central bank's guy's job is to collate them all together, make sure there's no weird financial disaster, and then send it to the C CFO. Now you can imagine this is fraught with despair and sadness because first you're adding numbers in an Excel spreadsheet where there's lots of things that have gone wrong. You don't know if you got the right data or you mistyped something, etc. So Foyan said, this is dumb. We're going to solve this. She built a Power App, deployed it. All you do in the Power App, you get a form, you fill it out. It says branch name, your name, date, time, how much money are you moving? And once you fill this out, shares it saves it in a SharePoint list. At the end of the week, guy in the central office's job is to hit generate. Suddenly reports generated. She'd put in some Power Automate in there to make sure there's no like weird math thing. And suddenly, by coming up with 10 problems, she narrowed it down to one problem and she solved it. Then her boss is like, that was awesome. We've now saved 60 hours a week through this ATM process. Let's use that to do other things. So then Foyan has now built 10 apps to solve 10 problems and started a Citizen Devs Academy in her bank to help all of the non-tech people learn Power Platform. All by building for one, scaling to many. Okay, so step one, brainstorm. Step two, narrow. You want to narrow down to three things that you think you have a solution for. If there's a really good problem and you have no idea what the solution is, this is not the time to go and figure that out for 24 hours. Like for example, what is the best way to solve COVID? I know we should move to Mars. Cool, cool story, bro. But how are you going to do that, Elon? Um, what is the plan here? Like, do you have a spaceship? Do you have a big spaceship? Do you have a colony on Mars? Do you have a dome? If you don't have these things, this plan ain't going to work in the next 24 hours. Abandon the plan, okay? So this is something that the Power Platform team at Microsoft actually had to go through, where we're being hit up by government agencies and hospitals and healthcare constantly. Like, hey, can you build a solution to do this? Can you build a solution to do that? And if we don't know what to do or how to do it, we're not going to take it on because that is just a recipe for disaster and failure. Here's a problem that we narrowed down that we actually can do something about. We realized that government agencies were reaching out need a central place where they can track mm -hmm. all of the equipment they have available to deal with COVID patients. So that means things like empty beds, equipment um, such as protective equipment like masks and hazmat suits and gloves, um, as well as available staff, supplies, etc. So they built this portal where anyone can 
repurpose this portal for their specific healthcare institution or government agency and put in their own equipment. So this just went live yesterday. So if you're working on a this kind of solution, this is one to start with rather than making your own. So if you look it up, I posted on LinkedIn yesterday, you'll be able to easily find it. So we narrowed down to one solution from 10 random ideas that we had. Step three, you have to choose one. And once you choose one, you stick to that one until you arrive at some sort of a conclusion. Our friend Chris, many probably many of you were part of this Digi Girls event where he helped this group of teenage young teenage women. They were coming up with ways to solve problems, societal problems with technology. Now, they're teenagers, so of course they can think of a hundred problems that teenagers have that they want to solve. But Chris is like, no, 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 we're gonna solve one problem and create one solution. So Instead of tackling college education or global warming or how to convince my parents that I'm old enough to have a car, they tackled a solvable problem, which is how do you combat loneliness? It's a humongous problem for teens, and these four are teens, so they're solving for one themselves. And how can they build an app that solves this for themselves and to their classmates? So during that time, they built this app, they made news, and they actually made a difference. This app is actually used. So once you've chosen a problem, now it's time to identify your victim, customer. Who is the person you're helping? Now, here's what I don't wanna hear. Customers, doctors, lawyers, space people. No, 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 no. Name. Like if you don't know their name, you actually don't have a case. You do not have a case here. So what I need to know from you is the name of the person you are helping. Here's an example from my young friend, Mertunjay. Mertunjay just learned about Power Apps like last week, by the way, he's a Microsoft student partner. So he gave, I give a session, he thought it was interesting. So he decided after doing a basic tutorial to go off and apply this to a very specific person, his dad. He knows his dad, he knows how to get a hold of him and he knows the specific problem we're having. Because he understands his dad's specific problem, he's able to build a useful app that his dad can use. Right now, because no one's working, they need to be really careful of their household expenditures and really track it closely. So he built this expense tracker for his dad to use specifically for the household. Now, he's built for one, and this can apply to lots of households now. He can share this with his dad's friends, he can share this with lots of people. So identify your customer, write their name down. Step five, it's time to co-create. If you've ever heard me speak, you know I'm a big fan of co-creating. Why create and ship things, throw things over the wall when you can co-create? It's the way to guarantee success. Because anytime you're in the business of, I'm sure they'll use it, you're in the wrong business because you cannot assume these things. I worked on Windows 8, I know this, okay? Trust me on this one. Um, you need to talk to your customer about whether your solution will work for them. And you need to talk about the problem, your solution, and what else they have tried. Because if they've already tried your solution, get details on why it didn't work and then go back and come up with another solution. So this is a good story from your neighborhood, actually. This partner named Tiski is working with the UK police force to build power apps to solve police problems. Now, you know who doesn't understand police problems? I don't understand police problems. Chris doesn't, though, you know, we keep saying we're gonna go to jail. We actually don't understand police problems. So the people who understand police problems are the police. So this partner is sitting with the Lancashire Constabulary and building this digital evidence collection app. Now, what's super interesting about evidence collection is it is old school. The way they used to do it was go around, take pictures with the camera, and then try to remember where it was and what what they're even looking at. Like, oh, look, it's a picture of a mole. What is that mole doing? Is it a bad mole? Is it, is it, did it commit a crime? Why are we taking a picture of it? We don't know. So with this app, they're able to go take pictures of evidence, stash them in the database, and then retrieve them and say, oh yeah, I've seen this evidence before. Now, this is super, super cool because it's something that the police are actually going to use. And in this process, these police, police are getting digitally upscaled and it's making it way, way easier for them to do their jobs. Now there's a bonus round here, which is if your idea will not help your customer slash victim, you need to go back to step three and choose another idea. Don't try to force it. Because if the customer is saying, this is not gonna work for us, it's not gonna work for them. You can't say, oh no, they don't understand, blah, blah. 
they are very smart people. They understand their business better than you or I. You need to trust that customer. So go back to step three, choose another idea. It happens. It's okay. Now, once you have done these steps, you've actually got a story, okay? Now, one thing that Chris and co are going to tell you is about how the judging of this hackathon is going to happen. There's a very important part to it, which will be storytelling your solution. Now, your solution can't be, yeah, I did this cool thing with Power Automate and then this portal, and then now we're able to pull data from this database and put it into this portal. Everyone will be like, that's a very good tech demo. It means nothing in this case. So here's how you tell a story. There's really four parts to it. You ready? One, who is the hero of the story? That's your customer, by the way. Two, what problem is the hero having? That is the problem that you identified them having. Three, what is the solution to the problem? That's the solution you're providing them. And four, do you have a testimonial from them saying their problem is solved? Yes or no? So this is very classic storytelling, um, tried and true in you know, Hollywood and Hollywood, all the, all the uh, Hollywoods, but it works. This is classic storytelling, and this is how you should think about crafting your story. If you don't have these four parts of the story, you don't actually have a project that is real. Now, once you have a story that you can identify, it's time to move on to the next step. But until you have a proper story, you're not ready. So once you have a real problem and a real story, it's time to apply less code, more power. Because the tech should be not the most important part of this. The tech should be the tool you use to overcome the villain. The tech is not the hero. This is not a matter of showing off the tech. It's a matter of using tech to solve the problem. So you can use whatever tech you want, but because you don't have a lot of time, we recommend you use Power Platform. I am a, I guess what we call is a pro dev, whatever. I live in Visual Studio. And I have never thought about using Power Platform to solve things. But believe me, if I'm in my habit the hackathons, I'd known about Power Platform, that's all I would have used. So for those of you who are very familiar with Power Platform, just like totally tune me out for the next five minutes. But for those of you who are not familiar, I'll give you a one-on-one. Power Platform is Microsoft's low-code app platform. And by low-code, I mean anywhere from I, I click some buttons all the way to I adjust this formula. There are four to five very interesting parts of the platform, and we will go through them. The Power Platform is built on top of Azure, so it's not a separate thing. It's a way to use Azure functionality without having to become an Azure dev. There are a lot of Azure services, and digging around within the Azure portal trying to find the right service can be a challenge if you don't know what you're doing. So this is a way to use, say, Azure Cognitive Services while making a chatbot. It's a way to use SQL Azure while using Power BI. It's a way to use Azure without directly having to use Azure. If you want to use Azure, please do. Okay, step one, the thing, the part one, it's probably the thing you've heard of, which is Power Apps, the low code approach. This is a quick, very quick way to build apps that run on your Android phone, iOS phone, uh, Windows browser, your, um, your PC or you know, Mac browser, and in Teams. Many of you are gonna be working in Teams. I would challenge you all, if you build a Power App, to actually pin the Power App in Teams and collaborate and discuss it. That is a very cool functionality that you're gonna be seeing a lot of this year. What I like about Power Apps is that there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can do with it. Uh, AI Builder, which I'll show you later, is meant to be used with, with Power Apps to make your app just kind of smarter and do things by magic. The very intro tutorial of going from Excel spreadsheet to automatically generated Power App that is done through the magic of AI Builder from Azure AI. It is done with intelligence in the system that assumes things about column headers and how you want to see a view of things. Another thing you can do with Power Apps is actually make a Power App portal. A Power App portal is a low-code website. Now, this website can be external facing or it can be internal facing to your organization. This is a thing that can have a sign-in or just be externally present. You can add iframes, pictures, all kinds of interesting things. Next. Um, what I like about Power Apps is even people who are devs who live in Visual Studio find it very interesting to use Power Apps so they don't have to go install a JDK and mess around with Android Dev or Golar and Swift and buy a MacBook. 
this is Rita. Rita is a student at University of Benin. She's been an Android dev for two years. And she learned Power Apps about two weeks ago. I've been on this tour day, Microsoft Student Partners. So I've been meeting so many young people and they're all like, this is so cool, very useful for demoing, learning, doing things. Now, Rita says, I just made a Power App from an Excel spreadsheet and that was so cool. I was did that in two minutes versus two years. I love hearing things like that because she's working smarter. She's using less code to have more power. If you're starting with Power Apps, and this is only for starting, do this tutorial. It'll give you a, a, the hang of it real quick. And then from here, you can expand and learn and grow. I recommend if you've never done Power Platform work in your life and you want to, this is a good place to start. Next, Power Automate. Power Automate, I think, is the tendons that glue all of the Power Platform together. So it's not something that you'll see on your own. It's kind of invisible, but it's incredibly important because it does things for you automatically. This is where you can trigger a notification or your, a ping shows up on your phone or these two things connect and data is passed from here to there, all through this power of automation. Um, power Automate used to be called Flow. So if any of you have played with Flow, you've played with Power Automate. The new functionality in Power Automate that may be useful here or may not will be is robotic process automation. This is automation of legacy apps, those old, old apps that all of these old traditional companies and governments run that did not have APIs that you can call. So this is a way to automate those things by doing a some sort of a desktop recording. So you'd say, I'd like to record these clicks. So I need to fill in this field with this value, that field with this value, click enter, and then this report goes over here. You click record, you do all the steps, then you play it back, and ta-da, the robotic process automation has happened. It's really easy to look at your steps, edit them, etc. The next part of Power Platform is something that's kind of cool and new that I love personally. It is the Power Virtual Agents. These are personal assistants or chatbots. Now, this is very, very useful for any sort of customer service. Anytime you need to answer customer questions quickly and on time, but you don't actually have the time to sit and answer them every time, and you always forget answers because we as humans, once we say something once, we forget what we said. I, for example, have given this keynote twice already. This is my third time, and I forgot half of what I said the first time. It's just very normal. So Power Virtual Agents are very useful for any sort of business and also for answering questions to customers that are frequently asked questions. In fact, one of my favorite demos, and I just did this last week, was taking a frequently asked questions list. Like every company, every institution has an FAQ and taking that FAQ and generating a bot out of it. I did this for my own fashion line and it was so cool to see how easily that was. It automatically parsed out the question and the answer, and suddenly I had a bot that sounds like me, behaves like me, has a bunch of questions. It's great. Highly recommend you try it if you haven't. I, what I really, really love about Power Virtual Agents is that you can embed them anywhere. Sure, when you first do the Power Agents demo, there's a demo website, you can test the bot, you can make the bot sound really sassy, I recommend that. You can use emojis when talking. Um, when the bot talks to you, I recommend that. But when you embed those bots, it can really be very you. So you can embed it in your personal website, you can embed it in a Power Apps portal, you can embed it in lots of places. Plus, I recommend you looked at the analysis of your bot to see what how it's doing. Is it getting most of the questions? Which of the questions are, ans uh, are asked more? Which of the questions are never asked? Just do some analysis on your bot to really understand what your customers are looking for. If you're just starting with PVA, you've never done this in your life, check out the tutorial, do the thing bot. I did not write any of these. They're just ones that I use to learn about the platform and I found them tremendously useful as a you know, level one. All of this is powered by the common data service. This is a low code backend and it's set up for non-database administrators. It's set up for the person who can learn to use a data store because they just happen to be a power user of the power platform. Common Data Service is very useful if you're planning to use Power Apps portals, if you're planning to use, um, if you're planning to use model-based apps and Power Apps, if you're planning to use Power Virtual Agents, because it stores this data in a way that is secure, compliant, and easily accessible from all over the platform. 
Okay, so the next two are emerging tech things that I highly recommend you try out at some point, if not this weekend. Okay, these are new and they're cool and they're freaking awesome. One, AI Builder. We talked a little bit about how AI Builders kind of does a bunch of magic happens here work, but you can use it explicitly to do specific things. A very common use case is reading business cards. So all of you, I'm sure, have con collected business cards at some point. Wouldn't it be cool if you could scan the business card and it's, it pulls the data, name, job, title, contact, into some sort of a data store, say a common data service, and just automatically does that work for you? Hmm, that would be cool. Go click on business card reader and see what happens. You don't have to train the model. You don't have to go get 30 data sets. This work is already done and you can just use it. If you're interested in training a model, these things make it pretty straightforward. If you want to train a bunch of forms, please use form processing. If you want to identify an object like pizza, not a pizza, object detection will do that for you. One of the very interesting demos I've seen recently is by Eliza Benitez, who is one of our friends in the Sydney Hackathon. So she on YouTube has this demo up that I highly recommend you look up, which is a tax form auto detection. So filling out tax forms is a huge pain, but reading tax forms, making sure they're filled out is a bigger pain. So what this object detection does is it scans in a bunch of tax forms. It identifies the fields we care about, like your name, social security number, signature. These are the fields we care about. And what this project of hers does is identify and make sure that those fields are filled out before it goes to human to look at. So through the power of AI Builder and Power Automate, she's built this demo. It's a maybe two minute demo, super, super cool. I recommend you check it out. And then here's my favorite. I'm super biased, but it's true. Mix reality in Power Apps. Imagine you can see holographic objects made of light and sound in your real world. It's not made up, it's real. So this forklift, not really there in that factory. It is a 3D visualization of a forklift. Imagine being able to do mixed reality without learning the Windows SDK, the holographic SDK, or Unity. That is a gift because those three things, not easy to learn if you're not a software engineer. So we've had one member of our community, Reza Durrani, actually already use mixed reality to build this. Um, he was imagining, so imagine you're a furniture store owner and suddenly your store is closed because the virus. How can you give your customers a chance to look at these objects and maybe see them in their house? I know. Go create the 3D objects and then you can do this tap to place. And through the power of spatial mapping, which I can talk to you about for the next 45 minutes, there's this computer vision thing that happens that um, identifies a triangle. Then you can place the objects in anything that um, the, the mixed reality toolkit identifies as a surface. So this thing is cool. It's in private preview right now. I know many of you are in the private preview because I've seen you in the private preview. Very happy to see you all in there. If you are even vaguely curious about it, go look up this blog post at the very bottom there's a place that says email to join the private preview email to join the private preview follow instructions so we've talked about the what and we've talked about the how you're going to build a solution you're going to use the power platform but those aren't the most interesting thing the most interesting thing are the people they're the people who make the power platform and this hackathon happen and contrary to popular belief, it's not all done through a bunch of professional developers who've been writing C++ code for 20 years. Most of the Power Platform is used by people who have not written code for a living. They're what you know we refer to as citizen devs, so I hate that term, um, because they are people who are just trying to solve a business problem. They're saying, here's a real problem in the world. I want to solve it. I don't care how I solve it, but this is what I'm going to use to solve it. And once they learn this power, they go out and want to tell everyone. And this is why currently today, there are 3.7 million power addicts, power platform users, fans, passionate, passionate advocates in the world. And today, by joining us in this hackathon and giving up your Saturday, you are one of them. So as you go forth for the next 24 hours, please keep in mind that a small group of thoughtful, committed people can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. I invite you to please make friends, have fun, use the Power Platform as your sidekick as you go forth and empower your superhero to make the world a better place. 
Thank you so much. Hey. Hey. Well done. That's crazy. Okay, cheers, guys. I'm going to go build an app. I'm stoked. I'll see you later. <laughs> um, yeah, that was awesome, Donna. Thank you, as always. I mean, you know what's you know what's interesting? That's the third time I've heard that today. Like, I just don't get bored of it because it, it's it's just got such a cool story around it, and I love the concept of, you know, Superman had to do some very basic stuff in the beginning in order to become the the fighter of crime that he is today. So that's awesome. And I think like we all, a lot of us are in different places, um, you know, within our power platform journey. And I think that, you know, no matter whether you're a basic app builder and you like putting the icon in cornflower blue on the top left, or you want to do some crazy data modeling and write some, uh, you know, TypeScript, no matter what you do, there's lots of room for everyone. So it's at this point in the presentation, I'd like to hand over to Keith. Um, Keith, are you able to share your screen? Oh, please share. I am here. There he is, the man. <laughs> cool. So, um, yeah, brace yourselves, folks. That's all I'm saying. I uh, could get ropey. Uh, I've, I've got the kids. They're all wound up on uh, on Nutella on toast, so uh, things could get really messy really quickly. This is my uh, favourite of the prison. Who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> they were asleep last night. This morning, not so much. Um, <laughs> so, I, like, I, I just... Um, I can't get over thinking like how lucky we are, right? We're in the midst of an epidemic. We're all able to work from home. Most of us have been able to keep our jobs. We're incredibly lucky. Like if we rewound 20 years, we'd have been screwed. If we re rewound 40 years, we would have been even more screwed. Like, you know, just, just think about what, I mean, you, you know, you can criticize all the governments in the world, but think about what's been achieved in a really short amount of time. I mean, we've not been this messed up um, for, a, for a very long time. And, and it's, it's inspiring to see. And I know there's a lot of people who are throwing a lot of crap at, at, at the politicians and the people who are trying to help, but I genuinely believe that everyone's trying to do the right thing. And that's a great thing, right? And I, I can't help but think that we are super lucky. We're all lucky because, you know, we got here by hard work, but that's not just the reason why we're lucky. You, you know, th there takes a lot of things coming together to put us in a position like this. Part of it is a technology stack coming from Microsoft. Um, and part of it is 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 just what we're able to do in the, in, in, in the world, right? Um, so let's think about what the big man's got to say about the whole scenario, right? The big man says there's going to be over 500 million apps built by 2023, right? Some of those apps are going to be built today. Um, and that's more than and have been built in the last 40 years. Now, like 500 million, think about that. Think about why the world needs 500 million apps, right? People like to own stuff, you know. Um, Donna said that there's 3.7 million power addicts. Well, if all of the power addicts go and build an app like that's 3.7 so if we all go and build sort of the same kind of app level that we see in a business where you've got a, a a power apps champion they normally have about 50 apps right so we're getting on for 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 that number just just on the power apps landscape alone so i think over the next couple of years that's that's actually achievable like that's not you know, crazy, but like, let's think about like 1945. Yeah, the, the first computer. Um, we had one app for cracking a code for a um, a situation that the world had gotten itself into where we were screwed, right? Like we were screwed. Um, things were going to happen. It was going to be bad. And the, 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 the side with the computer won, right? Like let's not let's not muck around it. The side with the computer one. Technology's never been so important as it is right at this moment in history. Like we are, we are going to be collectively bringing together everything we've learned to 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 combat this thing and get back on track. And I don't just mean like getting rid of the virus. I mean actually putting society back together after it's happened. Right, rebuilding. Um. So like, 
1945, let's think about what we would have been like, right? What it would have been like. This is Alan Turing. You, 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 you've probably seen him. He never looks so happy like in any of the photos I see of him. But this one I like because he, he looks happy. And he said, we shall need a great number of mathematicians of ability. Like there aren't many people I know who could put their hand up and say, I'm a mathematician of ability. Right. Like there are very few. Donna is one of the smartest people I've ever met. And, um, you know, she's kind of like Windows programmer and all this kind of thing. But like, would you confidently put your hand up and say, I am a mathematician of ability where I could match at kind of the level that Alan Turing was looking at? And bear in mind that they didn't have the calculator. They didn't have a computer to help them. They didn't have all that. They learned on pen and paper, repetition, hard knocks, logarithmic tables. They were sitting there working that out in their heads. You know, madness, absolute madness, right? And he said that there will probably be a great deal of this kind of work to be done never has that been so true right never has that been so true but we're incredibly lucky to have the tools that we've got right because we've never had tools like this before it's 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 bonkers right and there's tech everywhere everything is spitting out telemetry right like i'm sitting in my house i'm able to work from home with a video call a great quality microphone i don't need a headset anymore you know i've got a, a telly i can talk to i've got a phone i can talk to i talk to my kitchen timer a doorbell that takes photos um lights that change color a thermostat that i poke you know there's stuff all around us and and, and there's code in everything right now what worries me about that is that you've got it's a lot of knowledge debt to create code at that level right and there's there's not enough coders to go around so these companies are recruiting from everywhere and when you've got like an if statement under your brake pedal that worries me right like we we need to be responsible for the quality of technology that we write and one of the great things about the power platform is that the bugs that I put in my app are exponentially less than they were if I was writing pro code. Think about that, right? Just think about how that works, yeah? I'm writing an app, yeah? I'm writing an app in a browser, right? That works on any web enabled device, right? And I'm doing that using Excel formulas. Let's just, just let that sink in. Go and tell your 1990 self that if you were alive, right? Go and tell your 1990 self that. Go and tell your 2000 and self, 2000 millennial self that. Go and tell your pre-iPhone self that, right? Like I, you know, you, people forget iPhones only came out 10 years ago. Yeah, that's 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 not a long time ago. Yet we we are absolutely indisposed to them today. So just put that into context and think about that that app. Is secure. You, it's securing the data at rest. It's securing the data in transit. It's doing all of that for you. I don't have to think about that. That that takes away a huge amount of time debt, so I can focus on being with my family. I can focus on being with my kids. I tried to do the pro developer thing. I failed miserably. It was it was dreadful. Like hours and hours and hours on end. Uh, you know, I, I, for those of you who don't know, I used to wear one of these and drive a bus, right? And, and that's that's tough when you're trying to transition into a new industry and you're trying to learn stuff. And you, if you know, I nearly lost my wife, my kids, my house, everything just because I was buried in the books all day long. I knew what apps I wanted to build and this allowed me to build them, which is really cool. Like it's very cool. So I think, again, you know, we're lucky that this technology has landed in our laps and it's all kind of come together at this point in time. But it's not just about technology, right? Like two years ago, almost to the day, it's nearly my birthday, right? I'm nearly 42 now. And um, I was sat in my back garden, which is just like kind of out there. Um, never been able to do that before in this presentation point to the back garden. Um, and I was l alone. Um, I had my, my, my family. My mum and dad came down. My auntie came down. You're supposed to have a big party for your 40th birthday. And I, the only people I could invite that I knew outside of work were my neighbors no people came from work because we just don't bother going to one another's birthday parties in the bus industry it's just one of those things and like that was that 
I didn't have any friends. I didn't have a community around me. I didn't have people I could lean on, rely on, learn from, right? I did not know about it. And I and I tried to um, be in the community with uh, on, on Stack Overflow, right? And I got shot down, man. I can't tell you how dejected I felt trying to get into that community of pro developers who were just like, oh, what? You've not adhered to the forum guidelines. It's like walking into someone's house and tipping a cup of tea on the floor. It's just like they, they just want to throw stuff at you and, and hurt you. But the Power Platform community was just awesome. Um, and I was just about to fly uh, to Seattle and speak at Embass for my first, my first foray into any of this kind of thing. Like I didn't know anything. I was completely terrified. But I was most terrified of this guy, right? Samit Saini. I was absolutely petrified of him because I'd heard so much about him from Microsoft. I'd heard so much about him from my friends. I'd, I'd heard about Martin and how many apps he'd built. Like, you know, and I'm thinking, what, my couple of little apps um, for my buses are just, they're just rubbish. Like, they can't be anywhere near as good as anything Samit had done. We went out there and, and I got to say, it was the hardest couple of days ever because we couldn't get anywhere. Um, we became friends I think in about the first 25 seconds of meeting one another, we couldn't walk down the street because every time we stopped, we'd talk for an hour. We'd get one block and it would take us 30 minutes to just walk one block because we were just stopping and talking. We couldn't even walk because of the amount of information that was being exchanged between one another and the ideas. And it, it completely changed my life. And and Samit turned around. Like, this is how bad it was. Like, we had no idea about the community. Samit's uh, sitting there and, and, and he's dude, he goes, look, that's Shane Young. He's an MVP. I'm like, dude, what's an MVP? Like, no one knows what that is. And we're just sitting there going, yeah, like, whatever. And and Summit told us about himself and, and told us what he was about. And, and, like, we were all kind of sitting out there wanting to build cool apps. And Summit was like, no, it's not about that. Like, it's not about me. It's not about the apps I build. It's about can I change the world and help other people in my organization build more apps right because i know that my my workforce like my friends because bear in mind the guy's a security guard right are suffering they want technology right they expect technology they've got a phone in their pocket that they can talk to yet you know like you go into the workplace and you're given a clipboard and you feel like the business is failing you because the technology you expect isn't there in front of you. And, and that's that doesn't create like the best kind of culture in a business. You know, if they're kind of if you've got a huge high level of home technology and business technology just doesn't quite match up. Um, but now it can, you know, now it really can because we can build apps um, at speed. Um, there's this little graph that kind of like demonstrates us and i don't i don't like too many technical charts and stuff right but suffice to say on that side right that's us lot yeah the tech enthusiasts the visionaries the the the, the people who care right um and we were always going to do this thing we were always going to do this thing and um when i spoke to summit i didn't know much about tech adoption i really didn't understand it at all um at the time and uh summit sort of said look the first person I went to teach wasn't other people like me. I didn't really worry about the IT department. What I want to do, I want to find, find the most unlikely person. And bear in mind, Sam is a security guard. He's not a, 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 you know, at the time, he wasn't an adoption specialist. He wasn't this, that, and the other. That's his job title now, right? He goes and finds the guy who said, I will never be able to do this, right? And he spent time with him. He spent hours he spent you know painful conversations and he helped the guy build a build a, um, a really great little app um bunch of screens to go and do an audit of a of, of, on, on the bus um, routes around Heathrow right because they're lots of service providers so they can do a mystery traveler on the bus right which is a really difficult thing to do when you're undercover if you've got a clipboard you get on the bus of course the driver's going to see you straight away if you get haven't got it get off the bus you know, it's a mess on the phone everyone's on the phone no one's going to notice you and the app didn't just like didn't just work like it looked good as well you know it had a it had a style and this guy's he, he said to Samit, you can't teach an old dog new tricks and and Samit did he, he, he invested that time and i think it's really important that we invest that time 
And Sam, it didn't stop with that one guy, right? He went out and he found more people. Yeah. So this is Naz. I, I love Naz's story, right? Naz is a really good power apps developer. And um, the best bit about it is, is that she told me this story. She said, I went home one night and um, I showed my husband my app and he went, you, she said, I built that. And he just laughed at her. I mean, obviously he slept on the park bench that night, right? But seriously, like she was, that, no, that you couldn't have possibly built that. You know, but she was like, yeah, I totally did. Like it's mine. Um, and then there's Courtney, right? Courtney, I, I, I met Courtney like, and I said, Courtney, dude, like these apps are incredible, man. What, What's your... What's your background? What's your tech background? He said, um, I mean, not really a technologist. Uh, I, I sort of do a bit of Photoshop because I like doing manga drawings. I like kind of doing cartoon drawings and stuff. His cartoon drawings are absolutely insane, right? The guy's got so much talent. But he he came at it from a different angle. And he came at it because Samit sort of like reached out, made the art of the possible possible, but also made it okay to start at zero, right? Made it okay to start from nothing. And that's truly um, a gift. Um, my favorite um, bit uh, of Courtney and, and Naz um, was watching um, a, a wonderful human being called Sancho Harker, one of, the, one of the most incredible Power Apps developers I've ever come across, right? And he's a citizen dev too, yeah? and an artist as well which is quite odd and they're at an event at uh, the first event that almost all of them have been to and they're all just stood around a laptop just sharing those ideas the same thing that happened to to, to Samit and myself and martin at embass was happening right in front of me with courtney naz and, and sancho and San sancho couldn't believe that there was people who thought what he did was cool and were listening to every word and you know watching Naz and Courtney's face light up as they realized that their their dreams were just around the corner was absolutely incredible you know so it brings me to my big point yeah and this is um this is Terry yeah um and I don't think the apps that we build are about us um I think that the the pro code no code thing is just a um a silly argument between like-minded people I think the real people in here here are terry so this is terry say hello to terry hey terry how is it going right i'm protecting terry's an anonymity here because um this this is terry's job um terry's job this is where i worked before um a genuine photo this is terry um hosing down the underneath of a bus right um it's to do that i think it's roughly sort of three times a day um there's 1500 buses or 1700 buses and they need washing so that the engineers can kind of like spot the defects under the bus because all the gubbins for the bus that keep you safe are underneath it so it's got to be clean and that bus is driven through london um and, and they they cover enough miles in in like just okay. just sort okay. of you know to give you an idea they go around the world sort of look well it's probably about all right thanks then about 35 times a day the london bus network right all in all 30 35 times around the world a day roughly and so that bus is kind of like driven through, um, to put it politely, shit, right? Um, and there's there's all sorts of things under that bus. Um, there's there's dirt, there's vomit, there's poo, um, poo of all sorts, um, cat, dog, human, bird, um, and it's falling on Terry's head, right? This is a shit job. Uh, no one wants to do this job. Uh, oh. No one wants to do this job at all, right? This is the worst job in the world. Um, and there's certainly not a line of people queued out the door to do this job. So how does one, like, make Terry feel valued? Yeah, because at the moment he's thinking that, like, at any minute the robot is going to come and do my job. They're going to buy a machine to do this because they can't replace me because no one wants to do it, right? Um, so Terry kind of, like, if you give Terry an app, yeah, if you take away the paper that he has to fill in every day because it gets wet and mucky and all the rest of it, he gives it to a clerk and all that, you put an app in Terry's hand. He knows that apps cost money. So, like, Terry's convinced now that the company value his input because they've given him an app, right? He feels included in the future of the company 
because they've invested in technology. Now, if you went out and built that app before, you would never have been able to get it past the CFO. And it just looked at you and gone, dude, like, this is never going to happen. This is like a 30 grand minimum MVP, Django, whatever it is, blah, 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 web app. Like, it's a no-goer. We can't build an app for one person, right? We can't build an app for two people. That's impossible. No, no, you can with Power Platform. You really can and you really should because it's about reaching out to where technology is not, right? And we are we are Power Platform developers whose job it is not to write code, right? That is the definition of, of a citizen developer, who's someone whose job it is not to write code, yeah? So imagine how he's feeling. Imagine how your staff feel if you address uh, one of those problems in a business where like traditionally the the, the, the investment prohibits um, app development, like everyone wants business process to come first, but let's think about health and safety. If you want health and safety, if you want your staff to believe you're taking health and safety seriously, put it in a power app, right? It's right there, it saves lives. I mean, just, just go and do it. I, I truly and firmly believe though, that like if you look at Alan Chai's methodologies, the apps, for this cleaner, the apps for Terry should be every good as bit as the apps for the CIO, um, for the CEO and the CIO. I, I genuinely think using components and all that kind of thing, we can build these awesome apps that make people feel included and part of the business, part of the community, part of what they're doing. Their data is valued and it helps fill in those little Power BI holes where you don't quite know what the data is. So you make something up or an assumption on the, the, the whole. You can go and capture all of the data like never before, right? Um, people say we, 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 we have a community like they've never seen anything before in tech. And, uh, and I stand like or sit, you know, in isolation uh, two years on uh, with friends uh, with a new career, and I find I find myself um, profoundly lucky, right? Like profoundly lucky. So I'm going to take um, I'm going to take uh, a leaf out of Donna's book. I I, I started doing this um, after I met her and, and learned about her hashtag, just do the thing, right? Just do the thing. And um, I asked like at the London um, Superpower Saturday that you all go and like teach someone what you know teach someone your bit of the tech stack take someone like samit did a tech a, a tech virgin a tech novice and teach them everything you know and i still stand by that statement right i still stand by that statement because from that you you you'll drive this whole digital inclusion piece right but we need to do more than that now during this crisis we need to adopt a business a charity a hospital a community group someone anyone you all know someone you've all got tech superpowers go and build something go and listen do it in your spare time do it whenever like you'll get something out of it you'll get some knowledge you didn't have before you'll get a great piece for your portfolio you'll get something out of it for sure you'll, you'll feel good but we can we have to change the world and by changing that by changing our mindset of doing stuff just for us or just for our business and doing stuff pro bono because we've got to be real rebuild the the businesses we've got to rebuild the communities we've got to get back every we've got to get the country back on their feet we need to work together to do that and it can be a small thing just helping that community group if the community group was 10 percent more efficient and they're helping 100 people that's 10 more people you helped and if they're 10 percent more efficient proactively it's just like the r number of the virus it spread it's pervasive so i ask you label yourself as a power addict on twitter there's three um, 3.7 million of us but do reach out if you find someone who needs help do reach out if you find um you, you you're you're struggling with whatever it is you're building people will help you we will facilitate and if you want to build something for someone um we're going to have something next week uh from the humans it where we're hopefully um, we'll be able to point those people in your direction because the biggest problem we have at the moment is there's all these people that need help and all these people that want to give help and we can't marry them up together. That's our number one issue at the moment. Anyway, much love and uh, thanks very much. I'm out. Whoa, holy smokes. Keith, thank you, dude. That was incredible. Um, okay, so we're going to try something real quick. I want to see who's awake, right? So... I'm gonna, I want to test this. Can everyone that is awake and not on Tinder 
turn on the get, get off mute. Everyone, get off mute. Go. That's why my kids' school chats this. One, three, we're all going to clap. One, two, three. You're a legend. Thank you for that presentation, Donna. Thank you so very much for sharing your wisdom and insights. Uh, yeah. Get to the part of the hack where um, we're part of the discussion where we talk about what you guys are going to be doing. Now, here's the thing: there are four people in charge here, and uh, they are basically the boss. Um, they are the ones that are going to be uh, be calling the shots, so to speak. So don't come to me for anything. I'm a mere pawn in this. <laughs> the time zone belongs to four of my very good friends, which are um, Allison, Mike, Lucy, and Lee. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass over to Lucy and Lee, and we're going to talk a little bit about what this hack's all about and what we're going to be doing. So good luck. Over to you guys. And you've got to go with mute, by the way. Uh, Lucy, you're still on mute. Lucy, Long mute. I think this is the quietest we've ever been, ever. Hi folks, my name is Chris Hunting Ford. I'm here at Hack for Good with my buddy Jamie Barker. Hi, I'm Jamie, as Chris said. Uh, we're doing a hack today, so that should be fun. Yeah, yeah, for a change, um, I'm not even a team lead. I'm actually building something, which is really cool. I'm on Jamie's team. Yep, so we've kind of got a real master plan and we're sticking to that. <laughs> we're on time and on point. As with Chris, everything's running smoothly, so I'm <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I think um, we focused on some of the, the core areas around um, you know what we could do with Hack for Good in education, and we come up with something pretty cool. We're not going to tell you about it. Um, I think it's we're going to call it top secret, world class, famous. Hey, what, what did you say? I think it sounds good. We can, it's, it's, yeah, I think I think you're going to be surprised with what we come up with <laughs> within four hours. We're going to be surprised. I think it's I'm, going to be good. Yeah, I think we're going to be more surprised with what comes out in four hours. Um, but we, we're really excited to be here, and we think the organisers have done an amazing job, um, especially all the community needs that our team lead Charles was saying. 
uh, yeah, he's just broken the environment, so we'll see how we are when we get back before we thank him, I think. Yeah, there were a few errors, but um, I think we'll be good. You know, we, we're, kind of, we're kind of excited to see where this goes, but um, what I will say is that we've got an amazing bunch of friends here. Uh, I've literally never seen so many busybodies around, and I, I feel like the dumbest guy in the room right now, because there's a lot of brain power going on, man. There are so many hey guys, what are we going to do? Yeah. Um, we tried this earlier and it was fine, so <laughs> obviously I've broken yeah. something, yeah. but if everyone could just drop off and rejoin, well, that if that's okay, Lucy, yeah. is that cool? I think so, what we're going to do is, um, we're going to get back to our hack, uh, cool. hopefully right. we'll come up with something What we're going to do is, if you guys just rejoin, I'm going to close the mini down and re-answer. Okay, I'll see you in five minutes. Hello, hello. Hello. Hello, hello. Ah, we have audio. Sound yeah, works again. Yeah. Sorry, I broke it. Right, I'll shut myself up now. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can. Chris we can. Muted one again. <laughs> cool. Let me just test share my screen two seconds. Yeah, You're echoing, Lee. Yeah, Lucy's just joined on another PC as well. Like How's that? Yeah, that's okay, awesome. sounds good. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Just give, give it a couple of minutes. <laughs> so we did this cool. I'm just going to share and test the mic, just because I don't know what went wrong then. Yeah. It wasn't just Hello. yourself, Lee. It was everybody. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, sometimes when you force mute, it doesn't always allow you to re-engage afterwards. That oh, is okay. I, I've, I've done that during a client meeting once and all the clients couldn't speak. It was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> they were very can, happy. You, can you see our screen yet? Not yet, Lee. No. Yeah, yeah, cool. How about now? Uh, uh, it's coming through for me. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, you can see that, right? Yeah. Amazing. So for a minute, I thought it was me that broke it. I'm kind of happy it was you, Chris, to be honest. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Guys, do you want to wait for like another 30 seconds? Because people are still joining. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wait. We said five minutes, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we had we had about 130 odd on the call yeah. before we dropped yeah, off. Exactly. So cool. I, I can't believe Chris broke teams. Oh my god. I can. Oh, I can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why did that surprise you, Anna? <laughs> I pushed the music to the next level. Hey? Like that. Something destroyed. Yeah, yeah Kayla makes a good point in the chat. People could just mute themselves. Yeah, mute yourselves. Be responsible. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, have your kids got up yet? No, Mrs. No. hasn't got up yet. If everyone can yell really loudly. Yeah, let's let's clap again and put your speakers on high. Oh. <laughs> that would make them happy. Oh, that'd be brilliant. You should do that just for fun. <laughs> cool. We're at over 100 people now. Do we want to just start whilst the last few are trickling in? Yeah, I mean, we're not, we're not precious for time, man. We've still got a bit, so don't, don't stress too much unless you will be. That's so there's wind, apparently. Wind? Yeah. Rick, Rick hears wind. Rick hears wind? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hear quite a noise, but it is. So it's only me then? Okay. Is it windy where you are? No, no, I can, I can no, hear it too. I'm, no, I, I can I hear mean, it too. I mean uh, through the team. Uh. I would be joking. Sounds quite obvious, actually. It could be us. Chris, why don't you just it's mute hot, hot all hot air, that we need to go away again? No, thanks, bro. I'll just mute everyone again. If you guys wouldn't mind, just mute. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. Yeah, Chris, yeah, just mute everyone again, Chris. Hey, I just want to let you guys know, that was a character test you all passed. <laughs> yeah, it was just you that failed, Chris. Yeah, no, 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 that was part of the test, Lee. <laughs> got that test from me, right, Chris? We're not going to talk about that test from you, Lucy. <laughs> 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 
you know, you know how you know it's a really good uh, it's a really good Saturday morning when you find that you've got an old style of beer from the night before, like hanging <laughs> proper set beer. I had, little, <laughs> yeah. I had a little bit of gin and tonic for breakfast as hey, well. Will, Will, shall we practice our trick? Hey, Will, do you yeah. want a beer? Yeah, I would love one, Chris, please. Yeah, no problem. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Drink it, Will. It's from yesterday, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's about as fresh as you ever drink beer well isn't it yeah, to be honest i only ever find them on the floor so that was quite a fresh one according to joe <laughs> okay, okay should we get cracking everyone, yeah, everyone please mute themselves Cool. So first up, thank you so much for sticking with us, despite the muting challenges and the fact that we are the last people between you and hacking. Um, we just wanted to spend the next sort of 25 ish minutes going through what it is we want to cover today and why it is we're doing it. So first up, thank you so much to Donna, Keith, Chris and Will for the wonderful introduction. I think it really has helped to set the tone for this whole session today. So thank you so much for that. Um, but as I say, Lee and I are literally the last thing between you and hacking and potentially also our little puppy who may wake up at any point. So forgive us if you hear any wincing in the background, it is not us. That it could is. just be me though. <laughs> it could just be me. It's probably the puppy. Cool, so let's crack on. So first of all, we just wanted to give a quick overview on our time zone leads, just to say thank you to everyone else around the world as well. So in the APAC region, you can see who we've got here. We've had Lisa Crosby and Elaine, who've done a massive job getting that together in really short timescales. See, there's the two of us and Mike Hartley and Alison have come on board to help us piece this together as well, because there are so many awesome people who have wanted to hack today that it's just become a little bit overwhelming. So thank you to those two as well. It's been it's been mega. And in the Americas region, Emma Darcy and Andrew Welsh have pieced this together. Uh, and they have quite a lot of people over there and they have some really, really good teams as well. So there is a lot of competition. And we really want to win. So we really want the winning team to come from EMEA. So let's do this. Yeah, not that we're competitive much. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> so just to just to introduce ourselves so that you know who we are. Um, so my name's Lucy Bourne. Um, please do jump on Twitter and follow me or drop me a line if you need uh, anything or if you just want to, if you have any questions about anything. Um, I'm at Microsoft at the moment. I've actually only been there for just about five months now. I joined the organization to look after in the UK, the ISV organizations that build their solutions on the Power Platform. So actually this is really like on the sideline, really quite interesting for me because I'm really keen to see some of the solutions that come out of this platform that we may be able to take forward in the future. So really it's my role to enable them to make sure that they're getting the support that they need to build out their products on that Power Platform. So I get to do what I love doing all day, every day. And I joined Microsoft from Hitachi Solutions, where I work with Chris and Will and Kyle, Kyle Hill. Um, I'm obviously also like Will. I follow Chris like a really bad, loud shadow. <laughs> um, and prior to that, I worked with the wonderful Cloud 2020. And I know Ian, who heads up Cloud 2020, is on the call. So really glad to have been part of the Dynamics 365 and Power Platform channel and space for basically the entirety of my career. So I'm glad to, glad to be with you. And I'll hand over to Lee. Yeah, sure. So... Lee Baker, uh, as you can see, it's quicker for you to read them for me to say out loud. Um, our contact details are on there. Should you need anything during this hack, if you need to get hold of us, Twitter might be quicker than emails. If you email that group in the middle as well, the EMAA group that you would have had the emails from so far, you will also get through to Alison and Mike as well. That will be the best place to contact us all. We'll be able to jump on, help you out and um, we'll just be able to give you any help that's needed whether that's for teams for trials for whatever or just to chat things through uh please come and chat to us and yeah we hope you enjoy today but there is just to apologize that allison and mike's photos aren't on here as well um these slides were kind of built before those guys jumped on and helped and we just quite honestly haven't had time since we've had such an influx of people to help piece to to change these slides 
I think one other just to mention with that email address for those of you that are setting up your own internal team teams or zoom or whatever it is you're using to collaborate do feel free to send that link to us there we've had a load of people send that already but we'd be really keen to sort of subtly jump onto your calls just to see if there's anything we can do to help or just hear how you're getting on so do um forward those over now thanks it's you, not going to be subtle is it we're not going to subtly jump on at all might be a bit loud <laughs> but we'll be there and probably just mute everyone as well when we get there. <laughs> yeah. But enough about us. You've heard about us. Now what I wanted to do was really bring us back to the focus point for today. Um, we are absolutely delighted to have you here. We have over um, 189 people in total registered for this, and that's gone up even just whilst this call has been on. Um, and of those 189 people, we have 34 different countries involved. That's huge. And I know we're lucky in Europe because we've got a whole bunch of different countries in mainland Europe, but we're so excited that 34 different countries are getting involved. And as Chris mentioned earlier, over 390 people are taking part across the world. It's really cool. It's a really cool thing to just bring people together. I know it's virtual, we can't get in the same room, but to get that many people that wouldn't have been able to go to these events in person, uh, it's just a really good place to be. Um, so just to move on and take, see how this affects us a little bit more, you've heard from Will about why we're here today. Um, Donna, about how uh, like the approach for today and how's um, a good way to approach, approach this and with the five steps. Um, if I move to here, we want to tell, tell you just a little bit about the last hack for good and what came out of it. Uh, this isn't the first time, as has been mentioned, that we've run these hacks. We've run these for hack for good. We've run these at Embass last year and in other places. Fortunately, I couldn't go to the Embass hack last year or the Embass event at all, which is a bit of a sore point and it keeps getting rubbed into me as well. <laughs> um, but. I will now hand over to Lucy to tell you just a little bit more about that event and whilst I still feel like I've missed out on that. <laughs> I was super lucky to be able to be there and I know Chris shared this slide with you but there are just a couple of really important things that I want to pull out about these statistics. So particularly the red box in the top row there, we had nine solutions that came out of last year's Hack for Good. Nine solutions, of which several went into production, but I particularly want to focus on some of the stuff that went into production to help support the Elizabeth... Gr uh, Elizabeth Glazier Edia a Pediatric AIDS Foundation, easier for some to say than others, and also American Red Cross. These solutions are now used globally and were born out of uh, the hack for good that we hosted in Atlanta Embass last year when we could physically see people and get dressed up and collaborate in person. And what's really, really cool about those solutions is that they were done exactly using the technique that Donna mentioned, built for one, scaled to many. And with that, I do want to share a couple of other stories from the hacks that we've hosted in the past. So just thought I'd pop a couple of slides on there so you can kind of get the feel if this is your first hackathon, um, what it would like to ha be like to have one in person that we're going to try and replicate or even improve on virtually. And also for those of you that did attend, um, put the plus one in the, in the chat if you can see yourself in some of these slides. So you can see in the bottom right hand corner, we had um, Andrew Welsh's team, the yellow team with Emma Darcy from Click Dimensions, a whole bunch of others, produced a really, really cool solution that's part of one of those being uh, live. We can see Louise Fries and Ian Bourne there in the red table in the top and um, a whole bunch of other teams there. And you can see on the, on the right hand side, Mehdi looking on to get, to get a, a hear, a listen out for those stories that were being told and the solutions that were being built. We've also got a couple of more pictures here. Now, the real the story that I really want to tell you about actually wasn't necessarily about Hack for Good Embass last year, but was actually Hack for Good that we hosted well over a year ago now on the 16th of February last year. And in the top right hand corner, you'll notice this fabulous group of guys that actually took the time and the energy to fly over the entirety of their team from Germany to join us for Hack for Good in London last year. And actually what was wonderful is not only did they make that effort, but they built the most incredible solution, which used power plat the, the entirety of the power platform, but predominantly Power Automate to sit and listen out on people's emails to see receipts. So like Uber or Just Eat or um, Deliveroo. And it took those receipts and it passed the details into a platform that automatically analyzed um, what the value was. And it rounded that value up 
And it took that value from the um, approved bank account or PayPal account from the users that were using this tool and donated that value back to charity. So within the space of less than eight hours, these, this wonderful group of chaps were able to build this solution. And I'm really proud to um, say that they were able to join us again today for Hack for Good MBAS 2020. Really powerful story. And thank you, Max Necker from KNK for such a wonderful solution last year. Cool. And next I just wanted to highlight that not only do we have the opportunity to build some wonderful stuff and get together and collaborate, but we also have a great opportunity to socialise. And later on in this deck, we're going to make sure that you have the links to the uh, bespoke badger that Chris mentioned earlier on in his presentation, our virtual pub, and links to places where you can have virtual coffee breaks. Because it's really important not just to ensure that you fit this hack around your daily life, but also uh, and your families and your prior commitments, but also have some time to really chat with others, other teams. So I think one of the things that's going to be probably hardest for us is to get that collaboration virtually between the different teams. Don't feel as if you have to just stick to your team. Obviously, build a plan, execute on that plan and use the five steps that Donna mentioned. But do take some time to hang out. The social element is really powerful. And actually, I think this picture in the bottom left hand corner with Manuela, Rory, Martin and Paul Importantly, the two best buds we now know, Keith and Summit, really demonstrates the power of that. And I think rather ironically, this picture was taken in a, a, an American barbecue joint and poor Manuela is a vegan. So it wasn't particularly <laughs> her um, specialist place she wanted to go, but she was still smiling nonetheless. So I think it's, it's really important just to reiterate back on that fact that we are here to make a difference and we really can do our best to help. We, this isn't just something that we can throw away tomorrow once the solutions are finished. These solutions have been in production. These solutions are making a difference to people's lives. We do need to keep that front and center of mind when we're, when we're working on our solutions, when we're deciding what we're gonna do. Um, we do need to have fun. We need to make the best of the situation um, that we put ourselves in. We all get together. We've got 390 people on this, like in this hack that we probably never would have spoken to a couple of hundred of them. Now we have the opportunity to drop in. Let's meet each other. Let's find out. Let's find out how these are, how these these situations are affecting each other, so that we can really actually make a difference. We have to make a tangible impact with with this hack. We have to get some good from it. Um, but on the lighter side, we do want to make this better than last year because I wasn't it last year's, and this has to be better now. And it goes back to what Donna said. I think it's important to keep the picture of that customer in mind. Keep keep that person whether it be that nurse that you know or that teacher that you know or whoever it is that's struggling because of the situation that we find ourselves in even if it's a case of having that picture as your desktop background for today keep your customer in mind. so now we've kind of covered off some of those bits um let's let's see a little bit about how this is going to run so you will have seen some of these event details before and we've been through some of these processes or sorry some of these speak uh, talks you've heard from chris and will and donna and keith uh, a little bit from us and then we will leave you to crack on hacking um we'd like you to just be reminded that we do understand that these things have to be flexible that's why we do have 24 hours for the hack now we know that you've got to go and make dinner you've got to sit with your children spend time with your families um entirely up to you how you piece this together i just want to make that really really clear uh by 11 o'clock tomorrow we will send you a location to drop your solutions into and your videos into so that, that our judges can look at them um but what you do in the meantime is entirely up to you guys within within your teams cool so Six key points that we need, to, sorry, five key points. Obviously, maths is my particular focus area as yeah. well, Donna. Don't worry, you are not alone, sweetheart. So, first up, the solution. So, by 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, in around 24 hours and 20 minutes from now, you will need to upload your solution components to the OneDrive that we have put a link to in this chat here. We'll also pop it in the chat in a moment. So, that's both the video and the components. Um, and we'll make sure that you have that link. We've tried to make it as simple as possible, so that's why we've given you a OneDrive folder. Um, and feel free to take advantage of it. I have like five terabytes of storage there, so just, you know, go for bits. That's gonna get abused now. Yeah. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> Secondly, I want you to make sure that you spend a little bit of time focusing on your presentation. Your team needs to have created a five-minute video and be uploaded to YouTube. 
So this is a real challenge. And I can say this myself as someone that took part in the Hack for Education in September last year. Our team spent so much time on this really cool solution to help analyze the needs and, and desires of those of children on the autistic spectrum. And we built this incredible solution that was pretty much almost um, production ready. I say that looking at the techie uh, next to me. It was almost uh, production ready, but we spent absolutely limited amounts of time on our video. And so it meant that right towards the end, we had this huge rush on getting that video created, getting our story told. And it meant that we weren't able to get our point across as, as well as we could. So I really encourage you to keep that front of mind and make sure um, that you get that video and that presentation um, very much at the forefront of your mind. However, I would just very much um, to almost contradict myself and say that the solution is also important. I can feel Lee cowering in the background by me saying the video is really important. Whilst it is important, we also need to make sure that the solution we are creating is um, as watertight as it can be, whilst also telling the story of the, of the customer that you have in mind. Cool, timing again, just to recap, you now have uh, <laughs> 11, uh, sorry, 24 hours and about 16 minutes. So it needs to be uploaded by Sunday morning um, on YouTube and the folder that we're gonna give you access to. So judges, once your upload is done and we've gone through the completion stage, um, we wanna make sure that um, you know that the judges will then be spending the day tomorrow very much focusing on which solution they feel combines the tech and all the other judging criteria that you're going to hear a little bit more about in a, in a moment. So they are going to have an incredibly busy day tomorrow. So thank you so much, Scott, Anna and Ben, who we're going to introduce you to in a bit for taking the time out of your day tomorrow to assess these solutions and the videos. Cool. And then that's that. So all of the judges will focus on all of the solutions um, from across the different time zone areas. And then the winners will be announced the same week as MBAX, which uh, for those of you listening will very much know that that is next week. I think looking at the um, looking at the chat, there's a couple of spelling, spelling errors in our presentation. And for those of you that know me will know that, you know, I just like to get my point across. I'm not too worried about detail. Uh, Lee is the detail man and he obviously didn't read this well enough. So my bad. Oh, so one of the most important parts that I really, really want to focus on is because this is virtual, being social has never been more important. So I want you to tweet, I want you to post, I want you to LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever floats your boat, any part of your hackathon experience. So whether it's your route to hack, hack for good, you know, how far have you come? Have you maybe come from a uh, lost bedroom to Casa del Kitchen? I don't know. Make Make sure that you post us, show us your workstation, show us how you're collaborating as a team, any prep or snacks you've got, or wigs if you're anything like Mark Smith, as you, you'll see in the next slide. Show us your mascots, um, puppies, cats, dogs, babies, whatever it might be, we wanna see what they look like. Um, and make sure, as I mentioned earlier, that you join the virtual hangouts. It's really important that we get that chat going. So jump on over to aka.ms slash hackforgoodembass and you'll be directed straight to a selection of links that will help you get on those, on those calls. So can I interrupt for one second? Please um, do. Uh, the reason we want you to socialize is yes, to connect with each other, but also to show this off at MBAS. So this is a precursor to MBAS. This is the kickoff for MBAS. That starts on, we're in rehearsal Monday, Tuesday. The actual event is Wednesday. But there's something very important to know, which is our execs, so that's like James Phillips and Charles Lamana, Lorraine and all them, they're insanely excited about this hackathon. So we pinged them yesterday and told them, hey, the hackathon's kicking off and every single one of them are like, we want to see the finalists, we want to choose a winner, we want to congratulate them, we want to make a big deal out of this at MBAS. So um, one of them is going to be doing the final judging. The judges will select a pool of finalists. Finalists will be submitted to some exec or another. They will choose the final winner and we will showcase like a congratulations video at MBAS itself. And um, all of these execs want to congratulate you on social media. So share your story on social because I want to screenshot all of these cool things that your teams are doing and then show it at MBAS and say, we had this amazing event over the weekend, 24 hours chasing the sun. And it's the first time we've ever done anything like this, right? 390 power addicts getting together to hack a thing in the middle of a global pandemic. That's insane. Um, it's an amazing story. 
you are the heroes of the story. We want to share the story at MBES. It's the best part of MBES, I think. I'm one of the hosts and all of my filler segments will involve you. So please do share because you are giving me all of the stuff that I want to share with all of the attendees. Thank you. So if nothing else, we need to make sure that Donna has all of the best content we can absolutely find. And we need to make sure that she's got a really difficult job cutting it down. So we need a lot of <laughs> posts. Sorry, Donna. <laughs> cool. So next up, let's get to know a little bit more about the judges. So you may have seen some of these judges being announced on various social media streams, but we have a wicked lineup of judges. We have four Microsoft MVPs uh, judging here, which is just insane. Just Plus to senior Microsoft um, employees as well. This is just a great selection of people that that are gonna be looking through the things that we build. It's really, really cool. We've got people that come from business side, from ISV side, we've got uh, techie people in here as well. So they'll be looking at the solutions from all different sides, but there's some really, really, really good people here. So for our area in EMEA, we thought we'd dig in a little bit further. You'll see there's another name popped up on here to what you've probably seen before, and that's just due to the sheer number of people that we've had apply um, and join in with this hack. If we didn't bring in another judge, Scott and Anna, we're going to have too much work for tomorrow. So first up, we have the absolutely wonderful and incredibly gorgeous Anna Dermony. So Anna has a, an illustrious career, it has to be said, um, from complete .NET dev all the way through to you know full stack dev. She joins us um, at Microsoft, I think, uh, just a little bit after me. So she must have been there maybe four months uh, as a partner technical architect. So she's supporting our partners to be better enabled from a skills and a technical perspective, understand our power platform. So she could not be better positioned. She has a particular focus on integrations. So for any of you that are considering building an integration to an external solution that doesn't sit on the business application stack, not only will Anna be able to help point you in the right direction, but she'll also be really keeping a strong eye out for that in your solutions. So now I get to introduce my absolute man crush. Hashtag um, <laughs> Uh, we also have the legendary Scott Juro here, um, ready to judge as well. Uh, Scott is the abs absolute pinnacle of this industry. If you've been working in business applications or dynamics or CRM, depending on what point of time we're talking about, you will have read Scott's blogs, you'd have seen his videos, you'll have used his tools. If we're talking about things like Workbench for a mending driven app ribbons, um, there's a bunch of Scott's, that's Scott's tool as well. He's been an MVP for about a million years. He's just an absolute legend within our industry. And now he's going to be looking through what, what everyone is building, which is amazing to have him there. And finally, as Lee said, we have our absolute guest judge who joins us very recently to support Scott and Anna to help find the solution, Ben Vaughn. So Ben Volner is an absolute veteran when it comes to uh, business applications, but specifically with field service. Ben is a global black belt at Microsoft for field service and also has a massive passion for IoT and anything connected. So if you haven't seen Ben at an event, I'd be massively surprised because he seems to always be on a plane flying to one country on another to help them support their field service or, or be a complete enthusiast for field service. He also may have given you a flick button or an MX chip, and I would really encourage you if it doesn't, to reach out and ask him for one because he's really keen to put those in the hands of the people to make sure that we can all have a go at playing and hacking out some connected solutions for field service. Cool. Now that we've met the judges a little bit, let's run through the criteria. We're only going to do this very briefly because we actually have a little video to show you so the judges can take it through in more detail. So first up, the area that is most important to me, I'll be honest, despite the fact I'm not a judge, I really do think it's worth keeping an eye on this, is really to solve the problem. Find the person you're solving the problem for, evangelise that person, and make sure that the solution that we're building aligns to the problem statement that we presented for our own team. So secondly, align the tech. You've, you've had these packs, so you may well have read these through, but from the tech side, let's make sure we're using loads of the stack, make sure we're using it in the right place, whether we're talking about low code, whether we're bringing in code for different sections of this. Um, the judges will be digging through the solutions to see what's there, so let's make sure we're using the right tech for the right thing um, and making the most of it. Next up, again, another topic that's very close to my heart, teamwork. 
And I know this because I often play a very untechnical part in a team, but I do know that that is one a really important part to play. No team, no technical team is successful if all they have is a technical solution. You will need, need to make sure that you constantly communicate, that you're no, you know who's doing what, that you know when you should be doing things. So I really encourage you to put in regular checkpoints, whether it be every 45 minutes, every hour, within your dedicated time frame, whatever works for your team, make sure that those time points are in there so that you can come together as a team, make sure no one's struggling. Particularly as this is virtual, we wanna make sure that no one struggles on their own. Reach out, reach out, reach out, communicate, and put in those checkpoints to make sure that you've got time and diary to do that. And lastly, creativity and innovation. Let's, as it says, thinking outside the box. Um, let's see what we can use. Let's see what technology we can bring in. Maybe some AI would help with one part of this, as Donna kind of talked through. Some machine learning to get some data to the right place and get the right answers in the, in the right place at the right time. And try to try to learn something from this as well. Try and pick a piece of tech that you don't know completely. Let's bring in something new. Make sure you're personally getting something out of this as as well as providing something for the greater good and share what you're learning you know we, oh, won't, absolutely. we won't know if that's new to you let us know that that's the case but enough from us let's hear it now from the horse's mouth so let's hit the video can you guys hear this yeah hello hack for teams i'm scott Giro. hi i'm anna lemony i'm ben bomber we're so excited to be your judges for the EMEA time zone in this global hack for good. So we just wanted to outline our scoring categories and let you know about something a little bit different this time. But firstly, our main scoring categories are solve the problem. We're going to be looking for how well you've solved the particular problem that you've identified in terms of its simplicity, how practical it is, and your awareness of the target's user base, uh, physical environment, any restrictions of that. Our second category is aligned attack. This means that you're going to have to use several areas of the Microsoft stack. But that's not all. You're going to have to use the right tools for the job and also understand basic principles of licensing, consumption, sizing, so on and so forth. You're going to create some technical debt, so you will have to be aware of how much of that are you creating and is it anything in there that won't be able to be changed. And third, uh, teamwork. We'd love to see the whole team working together, pulling together, using each other's unique perspectives and skills. Uh, I mean, there's so many different ways that you could work. There really is no right or wrong answer. Uh, but if you have fun, if you're inclusive and you have a good team spirit, then you're going to score high in this area. And then creativity. Uh, we want to see some real creative thinking uh, to solve the problem in a way that's maybe new, different to other existing solutions that are out there. And creativity comes in lots of different shapes and sizes. So use your imagination to come up with some uh, original ideas. Uh, also, if you've got some awesome skills on your team, like artists or musicians, why not put them to good use and use those in addition to the tech skills that they have? Innovation. To score highly in this category, you're going to have to use some of the technology that you might always have wanted to use anyway. Do you know something about the new tools that were just released? Are you interested in doing a bit of integration maybe with Azure or with Microsoft 365 or with any other tools within the Microsoft stack? We all know that Microsoft stack in itself is really, really innovative and inclusive and accessible. Why not use some of those features within your project? Either using code or no code. Either way, if you do that, you're gonna score well in this area. What's exciting this year is the addition of badges at the Hackathon. So there's, we're gonna give certain tasks throughout the day so you can uh, complete that task and then win the badge. So team leaders, keep an eye on L. So watch out for our badges. The first badge is the visionary badge. So to win this badge, what you need to do is you need to clearly articulate the problem that you're solving uh, and how you plan to address uh, the challenges that it presents. So what you need to do is write that down and send in an email to hackforgoodemea at powerplatformug.uk. 
So you've got 90 minutes to complete this task for an additional five points starting from now. We'll email you back to confirm that you got receipt. So uh, all that's left to say is uh, thank you for being here. Um, we're really excited to see the epic solutions that you come up with. We wish you all good luck. May, May the best, best team, win. team win. So, thank you so much to the judges for putting together such an awesome video to really provide a narrative on what it is they're looking for from your solutions and your submissions. But I think just to summarize, we're looking for a consolidation of the four key judging areas and you will get as far as you possibly can with that collaboration and project management. Make sure your members come together to build the coolest solutions. Now, let's move on to what everyone wants to know. So, the winner's announcement. So this is always going to be the exciting part. It's always going to be one of the things we're thinking about. We're building for all of these great reasons um, and to give back to people that really need it from, and we're going to have some fun along the way. And then we're going to announce the winners uh, later next week at Embass. So once we have all of the, once we have all of the videos and things by tomorrow, 11 o'clock, our judge is going to run through them. We're then going to put them together with the wider regions around the rest of the world. And then uh, we're going to have some very special Microsoft people look at those top few from each region and decide on the overall winner with our judges as well. Um, we'll then see the announcement next week from someone fairly senior in Microsoft that we don't want to announce just yet. Exactly that. So. In short, you now have 24 hours and two minutes Ooh. to get hacking. So in two minutes, the clock will start counting down. So with that, we would like to wish you good luck and go and hack. Yeah, so just before you run away and hack, Chris has a couple of closing notes that he just wants to share with you. So Chris, back to you. Thanks, Lee. Um, really awesome, thank you guys. So the one thing I just wanted to share with you is that there's this little thing in Teams called Mute All. You don't want to press that when you're in a meeting. <laughs> I'm kidding. Are you so, sure? <laughs> yeah, I, I learned some valuable lesson today. So, no, anyway, um, thank you guys. So, yeah, just a couple of things real quick. Um, I do want to, I just do want to mention something really, really important. Yeah, we cannot, I cannot reiterate this enough. The thing that will win this for you is planning. Okay. I promise you, we've, you know, we've, a lot of us have done this hackathon multiple times. Every single time, the team that plans the best wins. And you can ask my good friend, Matt Snecker. Um, planning will get you everywhere. Spend more time planning, and you'll promise you now you will have the most rock-solid solution in the world. Rather have a strong, solid plan with something simple than something that's overcooked, like Donna was explaining. Don't try and boil the ocean. You're not going to be able to solve the world's problems in a short amount of time. So I just want to leave you with that. And then uh, Lucy and Lee, just correct me if I'm right. So everyone that's got a team now, you're more than welcome to drop off the call, go do your thing, go and take over the world, do what you need to. Those of you that do not have a team, have a problem, have an anomaly, want to talk, need a hug from Will virtually, stay on the call. Those of you that have a team and are ready to rock and roll. Has he muted all again? Chris, you just muted all, Chris. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just give up. Yeah, never that, team, no. you're free to go. Those of you that don't have a team, stay. And Donna, maybe go get some sleep. Yeah, good luck, team. Have a good time. Do, do I get to play my crummy 80s music now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, do yes. I? Incredibly excited. Hi, folks. My name is Chris Hunter yeah, I'm, I'm here now. at Hack for Good with my buddy Jamie Barker. Hi, I'm Jamie, as Chris said. I am. We're doing a hack today, so that should be fun. Most of yeah, yeah, for a change, um, I'm not even... There's going to be no one from the call, but Sammy plays music. Really cool. I'm on Jamie's <laughs> team. You know what? Yep, so we've kind of got a real master plan, and we're sticking to that. We're on time and on point. As with Chris, everything's running smoothly. Yeah, you know, I think we focus on some of the core areas around what we can do with hack and education. We've come up with something pretty cool. I'm amazed we got through that whole thing, and we didn't hear from the public. So I'm just going to go over any chat We're going to call it top-secret, world-class famous. What did you say? I think sounds good. Yeah, I think 
I'm not going to be surprised at what we come up with in four hours. We're going to be surprised. I think I'm going to be good. I think I'm going to be more surprised when it comes out in four hours. But we're really excited to be here, and we think the organizers have done an amazing job, especially all the community leads that our team lead, Charles, was saying. Uh, yeah, it's just broken the environment, so yeah. we'll see how we well, are. The we'll back. The most back in one. Yeah, there were a few errors, but um, I think we'll be good. You know, we, we kind of, we're kind of excited to see where this goes. <laughs> but um, nice there, what I will say is that we've well, got way, an amazing bunch of friends here. Uh, I've literally never seen always so many bad news, bodies and around, and I feel like the dumbest guy in the room right now. Because there's a lot yeah, of brain power going on there. They have so many so many people it's, uh, it's they have an ability religious. to find the only one thing you really yeah. appreciate. Yeah. I think I'm making up the numbers more than anything. Well, I'm not being sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I think so. What we're going to do is um, we're going to get those into our hat. Hopefully, we'll come up with something very cool. And once again, Team Awesome for the win. Yeah, Team Awesome is going to Oh, by the way, Chris, when do you open the pub? Not to sound like an alcoholic. When is the coffee place? Well, the coffee place will fix you. I thought I created the Zoom room, but I didn't, so I'll fix the coffee place now. Here we are at the TGI Global Hack in London, where we have over, I think, around 11 teams hacking away. And I'll tell you what, it's taken us a long time to get to where we are. About three months prep, yep. About three months prep, yeah. And finally, you know, the enthusiasm, the excitement, the decorations, the chocolate, the sweets, the, you know, even the beer, actually. And a cheers to that, Lee, has been absolutely phenomenal. So what is it that we're, uh, we're really getting from this this time around? So for me, it's the deployable solutions. It's We've seen this from the last hack. We've think, seen solutions actually out in the wild, being used by the world, that are making a difference, and we need to make sure we get the same from this. Absolutely. You know, and I think we're just going to wait and see. We've already had Region 1 kick off with their hackathon. We have got some great stuff flooding in. And uh, yeah, let's see what Region 2 can come up with as well. So uh, yeah, good luck, guys, and cheers. cheers. Hi, I'm Joe Unwin, also known as Flo Joe Online. I am the leader of the dream team here at the TDGI Global Hack. Um, we are actually creating today an application that, that's looking at the uh, the kind of essence of our students. We're looking at their emotional state in the school. So what we're going to do is create an application with a image that's going to show um, some kind of character portraying a emotion, and then we're going to be able to allow them to select a visual representation um, that will say and also uh, spell out to them exactly what the person's actually doing. They'll click on it and they'll get a true or false response to that. They'll process through it and then once that's finished they'll go on to a Power BI, um, they'll go on to CDS and then there'll be a Power BI report that will be actually put up to the teachers and they can see if any of the students are actually struggling with their emotional states. Hi, my name is Sam Mazzini. I work for Heathrow Airport and this is my first time I'm participating at a hackathon, a global hackathon and it's been awesome. Honestly, it's been totally amazing working, being part of the Dream Team. Uh, you know, we've got Flo Joe here who's our team leader who's, you know, guiding us in the right direction. You know, and it's been honestly amazing. I'm learning so much from other people and their skill sets and it's great to have everyone in one place and, and bring all their skills and all that knowledge into one place and, and working together to for one goal is how we can give an application to a school or an education sector and it's great when you have great minds think alike and uh, I'm not yet, yeah I'm enjoying it one minute but it's also great to see other teams you know communi communicating talking with us it's, you know, and we've got pizza and we've got beer and what else can you ask for you know we've got it, an MVP as well <laughs> <Hooray>. <laughs> thank you thank you but honestly this is what it's all about it's bringing community together not just locally but globally so it's been an amazing opportunity thanks, thanks to TDGG and, and the sponsors, sponsors. Pied Piper and um, we've been building a solution for reading records. Um, Rory can tell us a bit more about that. What's the solution for? So there's a, there's a number of elements to the solution. I'm building the uh, app part of it which allows a, uh, a child to record the fact they've, um, they've actually read that day. The parent will have to approve it uh, and then the aim is that we can have a Power BI report and we will be able to 
be visualized by the teacher so they can work out which children are reading and which children aren't reading as well as that we've got some uh, we've got a library facility as well which is which is linked uh, but not part of the same completely the same experience we've got a portal on the go as well so um, it's going to take a bit of wiring up so we're going to be quite busy over the next couple of hours next hour and a half actually yeah <laughs> oh so uh, plenty of pressure um, but the idea is that um, the teachers will be alerted to children that are not reading as much because they probably need some extra attention um, and the parents have the opportunity to get involved with their child's reading progress and the kids have an element of gamification to it so they can earn extra house points and stuff that they find enjoyable. I think that's probably fine. Right. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Hi, I'm Trisha Sinclair, a Solutions Consultant from eBay. And I'm Doric Sinclair, I'm a Head of Faculty in a school in Greenwich. Okay, so today what we're building is an application that's the easy transition of um, students going from key stage, is it three? Three to key stage four. These are primary school children going into secondary school. We want to make the transition much easier for them to find exactly where their classes are because as you know from key stage three they'll be in different classes all over the school. We also want them to be able to identify um, their subject teachers, we want them to know what their grades are and this is all going to be in one central location that will be easy to use, friendly and something that they will be used to um, on a mobile phone.